Where are you? What's happening? My husband's voice sounded worried on the answering machine. My mom's in trouble. He said his mother had collapsed and was taken to the hospital in an ambulance. While getting things ready for her hospital stay, I found a shocking picture of my husband and his sister. Seeing it made me freeze, and I ran to my parents' house to escape. I've been with my husband for three years, but now I felt deceived. He didn't truly care about me. He just wanted a wife. I couldn't forgive him, so I decided to divorce him. My name's Sarah. I'm 32 and work at a beauty salon. Four years ago, I felt rushed. All my friends were getting married, and I wanted to too. Hearing about their husbands and kids made me feel left out, even though they didn't mean it. I'd cry on the way home sometimes, feeling jealous. I had a boyfriend before, but I wondered if I'd ever find someone to marry. So, with two years left in my 20s, I threw myself into finding a husband. I tried dating apps and went to marriage events, but it was tough finding the right person. The ones I liked weren't interested in getting married, and things never progressed. I wasn't asking for much, just someone to share my life with. I only had friendships and short-lived relationships. Seeing my friends getting married one by one, I decided to join in marriage agency, even though it was pricey. I hope I find someone serious about marriage there. That's when I met Ken, my husband. He was five years older than me and worked for a big company. He was really good looking, and I wondered why he wasn't married yet. When I saw his profile, I just knew he was the one for me. When we first met, Ken said he wanted to get married soon, and I felt the same way. He was just as nice and polite as he seemed online, and I felt really happy around him. I told him I didn't have much education or job experience, but I liked taking care of the house. He said he was too busy with work to do chores, so he wanted to marry someone like me. I felt flattered and excited. I lived alone with my mom because she's sick, and I can't leave her by herself. Ken said if we got married, he'd like my mom to live with us. He explained it nicely, and even though I was surprised, I felt like he was being honest with me. I've dealt with older women in my job, so I felt comfortable with the idea of living with my future mother-in-law. But what mattered most to me was getting to know Ken better. He seemed to really like me, and we went on a few dates together. The more I got to know him, the more I realized Ken was a true gentleman and a kind person. I even got the chance to meet his mom over dinner. She was small and very pretty. She told me I was too good for Ken and reassured me about living with her, saying she didn't need nursing care despite her chronic illness. She suggested we go out for Parfit next time instead of dining at a fancy restaurant. With her relaxed, high-pitched voice and our shared love for sweets, I felt at ease about living together. Ken was eager to get married soon, and we began dating with the intention of tying the knot. Ken was always busy with work, but he made time for me. We went on trips and spent a lot of quality time together. Even seeing him first thing in the morning, my feelings for him didn't change. He was just as refreshing as when I first met him, and I found myself liking him more and more. His mom and I became close friends, bonding over our love for sweets. Despite her needing a lot of medication, Ken's mom was energetic and youthful. She didn't mind waiting in line at popular restaurants and looked forward to trying delicious food. Sometimes, I forgot about the age difference between her and Ken because we got along so well. She shared some stories about her past struggles, including her own mother-in-law's divorces. After dating for about six months, Ken and I got married. I was thrilled to have gotten married just before turning 30, and I felt proud of the effort I had put into finding a partner. We quickly registered our marriage and started getting ready to move in together. Then one day, Ken told me he needed to talk to me about something important. I started to feel uneasy when Ken said he needed to talk to me about something I hadn't heard before. He revealed that he had a sister named Hannah, who wasn't his biological sister. Hannah was actually the daughter of Ken's stepfather from a previous marriage. Ken's parents had divorced five years ago, and his father had passed away. Because Hannah didn't have any other family, Ken felt responsible for her and kept in touch. Ken wanted to invite Hannah to our wedding, 
but his mom strongly opposed it because she didn't like me. Despite this, Ken wanted me to meet Hannah at least once because she meant a lot to him. I was curious and a bit worried about why Ken's mom disliked Hannah, especially since she had been so kind to me. However, seeing how much Ken cared about his family, I agreed to meet her. When I met Hannah, she was very beautiful and outgoing. She told me she worked at a bar, and I couldn't understand why Ken's mom didn't like her. She was friendly and made our meeting enjoyable. During our conversation, I nervously asked Hannah about living with Ken when they were younger. They shared funny stories, and it was clear they had a close bond. They seemed like the perfect siblings. As we said goodbye, Hannah apologized for not being able to attend our wedding and wished me well as a wife. On the way home, Ken asked me not to tell his mom about meeting Hannah, as it would only cause more problems. I didn't know the exact reason behind the conflict between my mother-in-law and Hannah, but I felt it wasn't my place to get involved. So I kept my meeting with Hannah to myself and focused on our life together as a family of three. Ken was still busy with work, often coming home late. On his days off, he'd sometimes take my mother-in-law and me out for meals. We also did household chores together and occasionally enjoyed sweets or watched movies. Overall, things seemed happy, but I did worry about my mother-in-law's health since she sometimes slept all day when she wasn't feeling well. While I was at work, I made sure to keep in touch with her regularly. However, one thing that bothered me was Ken's constant phone use. He was always glued to his phone, even bringing it into the bathroom. At first, I thought he might be addicted to games, but it became concerning when it seemed excessive. Once I tried calling him several times, but his phone was busy the whole time. When he returned home, I mentioned it, but he just said he had received a call from work. Although we had just gotten married, I couldn't shake off the feeling of curiosity and concern about his behavior. I didn't think he was cheating on me, but I couldn't help but wonder. Surprisingly, my mother-in-law didn't seem bothered by his phone habits, considering it normal. One day, I couldn't shake off a bad feeling, so I glanced at Ken's phone screen and noticed he was frequently texting someone. It seemed like they talked often. Another night, Ken came home late, and I couldn't help but wonder who he was texting at such a late hour. Trying to play it off casually, I asked him, Who do you always talk to in the middle of the night? After my mother-in-law went to bed, I asked him about it, but he just laughed it off, saying it was his sister. He joked if I suspected him of cheating, and I laughed along, feeling silly for worrying too much. After that, I stopped worrying about his phone habits, even though he was still busy with work and didn't have much time for me. However, I started feeling uneasy about how much time he spent with Hannah. Two years passed, and life with the three of us went smoothly. My mother-in-law and I had a routine of visiting the sweet store together. We shared a close bond, and I never felt awkward about living with her. Ken's work kept him busy, and he continued to be glued to his phone. But I had gotten used to it. Despite some minor complaints, we were a happy family. Ken always made time for family events, like our wedding anniversary and my birthday. Then, one day, my mother-in-law fell sick and spent the day in bed. I checked on her frequently, and in the evening, she complained of pain. I quickly called an ambulance, and she was taken to the hospital. Though I was worried, I was relieved to find out her condition wasn't critical. I informed Ken about her hospitalization, and he left work early to join us at the hospital. I decided to go home to pack some things, planning to stay with my mother-in-law at the hospital for a few days. Upon returning home, I went to my mother-in-law's room to gather her insurance card and personal seal. She had mentioned they were in the top drawer, but I couldn't find them there. So I checked the bottom drawer where I stumbled upon a small box, thinking it might contain what I was looking for. I opened it, only to find a shockingly large number of photographs inside. As I looked through them, my heart sank. The pictures weren't of Ken and Hannah as siblings, they were of them as lovers. They were holding hands, kissing each other, and the sight made me feel sick to my stomach. I couldn't bear to look at them for long, so I closed the box. The realization hit me hard. Ken had been having an affair with Hannah all this time, and I couldn't believe it. 
my mind went blank, and the next thing I knew, I was running to my parents' house, clutching the box tightly. At my parents' house, my mother was surprised to see me in such distress. When she saw the contents of the box, she hugged me tightly as I broke down in tears. After a while, when I had calmed down a bit, she asked me if Ken was cheating. I explained to her that the woman in the pictures was Hannah. And the box was found in my mother-in-law's room. I hadn't even told my own mother about having a sister-in-law. I can't continue living with him, I sobbed to my mother. Of course not. You absolutely can't stay with him, she replied firmly, sharing my anger. When I checked my phone, I saw numerous missed calls from Ken and an angry voicemail asking where I was and what I was doing while his mother was in trouble. But after discovering the truth, I couldn't bring myself to respond. I was really upset, but I thought it was strange because I felt like I should be the one who's angry. So, I turned off my phone because just talking about it made me feel sick thinking about the pictures. The next day, I decided to be kind and reach out to him. I said, I need to talk to you tonight. I'll bring my mom along, so please call Hannah. He started talking a lot, saying how relieved he was that Hannah was okay. It annoyed me, so I just said, Okay, see you tonight, and hung up. Right after that, I went to see my mother-in-law in the hospital. She looked happy to see me and called my name. I apologized for her feeling sick, but I needed to know the truth. I found a box in her closet and showed it to her. She started crying. She said, Sarah, I'm really sorry. Ken is my ex-husband's stepchild. Five years ago, they told me they were in love, even though they're not related by blood. They're both my kids. I told that it wasn't right and Hannah got upset and left. I haven't heard from her since. I should have told you earlier, but I didn't want to upset you with their old photos. Don't worry. I don't know where Hannah is now, and I'm pretty sure she's not in touch with Ken. She looked me straight in the eyes, and I could tell she was telling the truth. Ken still talks to Hannah. Actually, he introduced me to her years ago. I told my mother-in-law, and she cried again. But you're married, I pointed out. I'm sorry it's not your fault, but I can't stay married to Ken anymore. I'm going to divorce him. Don't apologize to me. It's my mistake for not noticing. I'm sorry, she said. I couldn't hold back my tears either. I left the hospital room and headed to the house where my mom, Ken, and Hannah were waiting. When I got there, they were all waiting for me. I sat down and immediately showed them the pictures. You two were in a relationship and I'm divorcing you. I said. Ken didn't seem bothered and said, yeah, that's true. Being family and being in a relationship are different. We were happy as a family. Wasn't mom happy too? What's wrong with that? We don't need to get divorced. He said with his usual bright smile. Hannah, I'm sorry for not telling you earlier, but I didn't mean to break up your family. I don't think we need to get divorced, she said. I was furious. Hearing them talk like that made me shake with anger. That's ridiculous. This is cheating. How can I stay in a family with someone like that? I shouted at them loudly. Hey, calm down. If you want a divorce, that's okay. I tried to be a good family member. Since you're the one asking for it, we'll make it a friendly divorce. Ken said something I didn't quite get. What? How can you call this friendly? This is a huge betrayal. I'm going to ask for alimony from both of you. I exclaimed. Okay, sure. I'll pay whatever you ask for. Just don't tell my mom. And let's say the reason for the divorce is just differences in personality. I already told your mom everything. She was upset. I told her about the divorce, Ken said. What? Why would you do that? He lost his cool and yelled loudly in response to my words. Hannah, why did you tell her too? She cried. I'll have my lawyer contact you about the alimony. Goodbye. I said as I left the house with my mother. She told me, you handled that well, and hugged me tightly. I cried loudly, letting out all my emotions into her embrace. Now I realize that Ken never really cared about me. He just wanted a wife to make his mom happy. I thought I wanted to marry him too, and maybe we were happy as a family. 
but I can't forgive myself for not seeing the betrayal sooner. I'm just glad I figured it out now and could get a divorce. Later, my lawyer finalized the divorce successfully. I asked for alimony from both Ken and Hannah, but Hannah didn't have money, and she was upset with Ken for only paying his share. Their relationship soared, and they decided to split up. I couldn't afford to pay the alimony, so I started working double shifts at the bar where I used to work. After my mother-in-law left the hospital, she was upset with Ken and warned him that if he ever sees Hannah again, she'll cut ties with him. Despite everything, my mother-in-law and I still keep in touch, and we sometimes go out for treats. I'm relieved that she's out of the hospital and seems to be doing well. Right now, I'm staying with my parents. I'm busy getting ready for the beauty salon where I used to work to reopen. Once things settle down a bit more, I'll move out and live on my own again. I'm not jealous anymore when I hear about my friends who are married. Until I meet someone special again, I'll just keep working hard.